showdown over the Port Authority. As the agency continues to contend with the issue of transparency, a new battle brews in the legislature. State Democrats are gearing up for an override of Governor Christie's veto of legislative reform. But will they get Republican support this time around? That and more with the Roundtable. Republican strategist Stephen Soam, Democratic strategist Adam Silverstein, Sabeel Marcellus of Chasing, and media analyst Steve Adubato. It's all ahead on New Jersey Now. Everybody. Welcome to New Jersey Now. I'm Jim McQueenie, and I am joined for this show, a special show on the reforming of the Port Authority with Steve Adubato, who is the uh, well-known to everybody in New Jersey, of course, but also an author of a book, You Are the Brand. And, you know, when we talk about the Port Authority and everything that's going on, we'll get to a lot of the reforms deeper into the show and some with you here. Um, the Port Authority itself is mm -hmm. as big as many states <laughs> in the United States, right? As a government entity, 30 states yeah. uh, on here. You, you look at the Port Authority somewhat as a brand. And if, if you're looking with all the trouble that seems to have ensued lately, Bridgegate, onto what's going on now and things, uh, although maybe arguably a little bit before that too, um, it seems like a renegade agency in need of brand repair. You just laid it out, Jim. I mean, the brand of the Port Authority is as low as a brand of a, they call it a quasi-public agency. It doesn't even matter what you call it. The fact is, when you go over those tolls, so you go over the bridge or the tunnels or you're on the path, you may not know it's the Port Authority, but when things go wrong, it's the Port Authority. When uh, things went wrong with Bridgegate, it's the Port Authority. When there's a problem, you know, it's the Port Authority. When there's a scandal with a contract, it's the Port Authority. So the Port Authority has become the whipping boy, right? The overnight, uh, the path situation overnight, I'm sure we'll be talking about later. It's the Port Authority. So the Port Authority, Jim, has become the convenient villain in all this. Well, let's review the bidding on one thing. It's also been the convenient building block and practical building block that built the region's economy. Absolutely. From the airports, the shipping areas, to the transportation networks. And I didn't say like it was that. fair, all the criticism. Right. But in this case here, you look at it, it built this region in the last half of the 20th century, and now it starts the 21st century. It seems to have a tin ear to what the way people run governments these days on the issue of transparency. But here's the thing. Sorry for interrupting. Yes, here's sorry. the thing. The Port Authority was designed originally, 1921 compact, without getting into a lot of history, New York, New Jersey come together, they can't do it alone. They build George Washington Bridge, Lincoln Tunnel, Holland Tunnel, right? The, the, all the airports, that's great. But then they start getting into real estate. What are you doing buying real estate? It's not transportation. It's not getting people trans Hudson, right, right. across and New York, And it was the New World Jersey. Trade Center that started that. It was the World Trade Center. Now, there was a reason for it at that time. It made sense at that time. But then when they got into other things, they got into certain problems. And then when it became a patronage agency for governors of both states to put people that they didn't want to put on the state payroll, you started to have all sorts of problems. And when each governor started influencing it to a degree that was unhealthy and wrong, then the legislatures got involved. And when Bridgegate happened, all hell broke loose. Why is it that Governor Cuomo of New York and Governor Christie of New Jersey both agree to something that does not seem to be a smart thing in the way you govern today? And that's about transparency. They both agreed uh, that the full transparency, let's call it that now, is something they don't want to do. Well, what this, are they hiding? that's the way you frame it. With the legislatures in both states passed legislation that tried to make the Port Authority more transparent and a whole range of other things and we'll talk about that I'm sure with the panel but the governors are saying we have our own group of people and they are going to try to transform and make the Port Authority more transparent we could argue that forever but here's the thing Cuomo and Christie are personal friends Cuomo and Christie like each other they trust each other and frankly they have a bond over the Port Authority and they believe that they are in a better position as two chief executives to do this now, is it a bond of the Port Authority is it a, or is it a cabal with the Port Authority? Both benefit from things like patronage. Do I believe that it would be better and healthier to expand the discussion beyond Governor Christie and Governor Cuomo? Yes. Do I think it would be healthier and better to not have simply both governors control it? Yes. But the fact is, they have veto power. What does that mean? When the Port Authority passes a toll increase, and it's in the minutes of a meeting, the commissioners who are appointed by the governors, as you well know, when they pass the minutes, or it's in a, in a meeting where they say, we're going to uh, pass a toll, who's, who are the only two people who can veto it? the governors of either state, which means they are the two chief executives. They love that control. And then, by the way, if they change it, it's not just for them. It's for every future governor after this. They sort of have a secret agreement 
with every chief executive who served before them and everyone after. Well, let and me that's go to your, this is a lot let me of go to your expertise here, which is about branding here. Uh, uh, and it'll be easy. Image and I'll, reputation. I'll give you about 45 seconds to go. solve the Port Authority's branding oh, problem. Thanks, what Jim. would you recommend to them yep. how they restore uh, their character uh, in the way that, of governance? Number one, open up those public meetings so that people can really be there and criticize commissioners. They're doing a little of that now. More so. Yep. Take the criticism, take it on, and also own your mistakes. They don't admit to anything. The Port Authority commissioners, they're infallible in their own minds. The other thing is I believe you need one chief executive. You can no longer have the executive director appointed by one, uh, one governor and the chairperson appointed by the, that's political. You and I both know that's not the way you run an organization. You have one chief executive, that's the way it should be run. Those are two things that need to be done whole lot of other things, those are the beginning. All right, you're going to join us when we come back to the roundtable when we talk about more of the political aspects here of the Port Authority and some of the things that need to be corrected when we come back.